Hi everyone, I just wanted to show you this wonderful present that Dave gave me for Christmas. This is the Nostalgia My Mini 4-Pack Value Set. Mini Grill, Waffle Maker, Omelette Maker, and Mini Donut. But today I'm going to concentrate on the Mini Donut Maker and I will be making Mini Donuts. <music> So I'm going to go over this a little bit. You have seen me use other mini appliances. Before we use it, you want to wipe down all of the surfaces with a damp, non-abrasive cloth. Find a dry level surface near an electrical outlet. I'll be moving it over to my countertop. I will go over a little bit of things as I'm doing it, but it's pretty much the same as all the other appliances. So what all goes into these mini donuts? Two cups flour, one fourth cup sugar, one teaspoon salt, one half teaspoon baking soda, one teaspoon nutmeg, one teaspoon baking powder, three fourths cup buttermilk, and I don't have any buttermilk, so I'm going to make my own. We'll add one tablespoon of vinegar, and then we'll add milk to make it the three-fourths cups milk and then let it sit about five minutes. You can use lemon juice instead of the vinegar if you desire. One-fourth cup vegetable oil and one egg. Then you can choose to make your donuts with either powdered sugar or you can do chocolate and melt that. I have this chocolate flavored candy coating which has a microwavable tray included. I'll be using that. So let's begin. They say you can spray the donut maker with like Pam. That will ruin or can ruin the non-stick coating. So either use a spritz bottle of oil or just brush it on. And that's what I'm going to do. I'll be brushing it on with some olive oil with my little pastry brush. And I'm even going to spray on the outside just in case it um, spills over. It won't stick to the outside. And you want to do oil on top and bottom. And you don't want it so much that it's running out all over the place. Now we will preheat it, plug it in. The indicator light is on. When that goes off, it will be ready to cook. In the meantime, we'll mix our ingredients together. Mix all of the dry ingredients together. The two cups of flour, the one fourth cup of sugar, the one teaspoon of salt, one half teaspoon of baking soda, the one teaspoon of nutmeg, and the one teaspoon of baking powder. And whisk that all together until thoroughly mixed. Stir in the buttermilk. And that has sat for about five minutes. That is three-fourths cups buttermilk, one-fourth cup vegetable oil, and the one egg. And mix that with a fork until thoroughly incorporated. And I'll get that all mixed and I'll be right back. So the unit is preheated. Grab it by the lip. Be very careful. Anywhere else is going to be hot. Lift that up and fill the cavities with the batter. I thought it was going to be a little bit runnier batter and it's not, so we're just going to kind of spread that out. Use wooden or plastic utensils. And anybody that knows me, my first batch that if it's something I've never tried, it doesn't turn out. I'm not putting that one as, as uh, full. This one I think is way too full. This one will overflow, I know. These ones I'm not sure. So shut it and let it cook for three to seven minutes until it is golden brown. They do look done, so take a plastic or wooden utensil and remove them. And aren't those cute? 
and then put them on a plate to let them cool just a little bit and um, then we will dip them in the, the frosting or the powdered sugar. All right, so while I'm doing that, these have are warm, they're not hot. Just take them and put them in the powdered sugar like so. If they're too hot, they will get a wet shine to them. If they're too cold, they won't stick. And there you have that. And then just put them on a plate to finish cooling. Now with the chocolate, just dip them in the chocolate like that and cover them up completely. Let the excess drip off and put them on a plate. So I'll get all of these done and then I'll show you the finished product. So one thing that I wanted to point out, if you overfill these two front ones, they take longer to cook than the back one. I just stuck another bit of batter on the back one here because that one was done. The lid co closed completely and these ones, they're up just a little. They do poof up a little bit, so put in less if that's the case. Otherwise, you'll have to cook it long because on the bottom, the bottom does get done before the top. All right, so they're all done. I made 32 mini donuts, 16 chocolate and 16 powdered. The chocolate was easier because you didn't have to have it at the exact temperature to um, get it covered. The powdered, if it's too hot, it gets real shiny if I had some of those. And if it's too cold, then it doesn't stick on real well and I had some of those as well. As soon as these are completely cool, I will put them in an airtight container and then when Dave gets home, he can do a taste test. So here are the mini donuts that was made in the My Mini Donut Maker that Dave bought me for Christmas. So let's see what Dave thinks. Oh, that's pretty good. Is this a donut mix or what? It's homemade donuts made in the little My Mini Donut Maker that you got me for Christmas. Okay. Hmm. And I just rolled it in powdered sugar, but it didn't stay very well. Pretty tasty. Recipe deals for easy meals. Please like, subscribe, and share. This is Cooking with Sherry. Until we meet again.